Good morning, brethren, sisters, and church of the living God. Hello. Hello. And to all of those who are lost, hello. Question. Is that man of sin, the son of perdition, inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist, is that man of sin, the son of perdition, amongst us now as we speak? I don't know. I don't know. Personally, myself, do I believe that that man of sin, the son of perdition, has been birthed and is amongst us here on earth? Do I personally believe that and think that? Yes, I do. I personally believe that that man of sin, the son of perdition, is amongst us. I do. I really do. Because if we have, say, only a decade to go before we, the Church of the Living God, get redeemed, caught up, um, he must be on the earth. That is my train of thought. But ultimately, we do not know. I do not. Okay, and if anyone tries to tell you that they do, they lie to you, or they're working for the Vatican. <laughs> and I would bet you that the Vatican knows that that man of sin, the son of perdition, is amongst us here on earth. And some of the world summit leaders, maybe some of them know. I don't know. We're going to be looking at a video here on YouTube called, what, what, what is it called? A dear friend of mine asked me to do something with this. Uh, it's called COP Opening Ceremony World Leaders Summit. Uh, and the link for it will be in the description box. But, um, and we're going to listen to an excerpt from this, uh, from his greatness, such a wonderful bloke, as the Englishmen and uh, Australians like to say, such a wonderful bloke, uh, Sir Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales, or whatever he is. Going to be hearing a little bit of his speech that he gives. And of course, you see our imbecile uh, puppet boy, uh, Smoking Joe, over there. You don't see President uh, Harris in there, of course. But um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to be going over a little of this. But um, the question is, is he amongst us? Like I said, personally, I do believe so. But ultimately, I don't know. I don't know. And if he is amongst us, what does that mean? If that man of sin, the son of perdition, is amongst us right now, then that means that some, somewhere within the, life, the average lifespan of a man, the catching away will happen sometime. Now, like I said, I don't know when, nobody knows when, okay? Like I've shared with you uh, many a time, I personally believe that we do not have a decade left. But if we do, it is what it is. But we're going to be considering a few of these things, but, but it, it, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I remember what two wicked coadjutor devils, uh, a lovely couple, uh, once accused me of, Brad, you're making people lose hope in the catching away. What are you afraid of? You wicked devils. Here's, here's, here's what I want to talk to you about first. See, we who are saved of the church of the living God, we do not have anything to fear. We really don't. Because... Whether we live or die, we're going to be with the Lord, okay? Because we who are of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ Jesus, we are going to be redeemed, caught up, resurrected, okay? We're going to be caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? And whether we live or die, we, be we belong to the Lord, and we are going to be with the Lord, okay? But see... As the church of the living God, inaccurately referred to as Christians, uh, because remember, Catholics are Christians. I won't get off on that. But as the church of the living God, we who are of his bones, of his body, okay, that does not absolve us 
from doing the works of the Lord, which he has saved us to do. Not to save ourselves or to stay saved or anything like that. But he has called us on to doing the works, meaning preaching the gospel, being a witness unto the lost, that kind of stuff, okay? It doesn't absolve us from doing any of that, okay? And then you got these devil heretics, these coadjutors who will come up to people who will like, for example, that have been said of me, so, oh, you're making people scared. What are you afraid of? It's like, Shut up, blow it out your rear end. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Your authorized version of the scriptures. And turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. See, with the catching away closer today than it was yesterday, okay? Could this spring, could this year be the year that we, the church of the living God, are redeemed, resurrected, caught up? Yes, could be, okay? Many people like to argue about many things, but the reality is we could get caught up this year. And don't for a second, don't for one second think that they wouldn't be able to get that temple up just like that. Okay. I know that there are some individuals out there who are like, oh, they wouldn't be able to get that up. It'll take them, you know, they don't got, no, 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 no. They have been preparing for this. They have been preparing for this. I personally believe that if the church of the living God were redeemed today, that they could have that uh, third temple built within a matter of months. Especially since he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Since the body of Christ, the church of the living God is out of the way. Oh boy. Okay. But Ephesians chapter 5. Verses 13 on to verse 17. Follow me along in the scriptures. The authorized version of the scriptures. Commonly called the King James Version. Okay. <laughs> there are no other versions of scripture. But it's called the King James Version. It was before, it was called the King James, known as the Authorized Version. So, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 17. Follow me along. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Hold your place here and go to John chapter 3. Uh, we're going to look past John 3.16, people. Okay? John chapter 3, verses... What is that? What is that? Oh, boy. John chapter 3. What is it? Uh, thank you, pardon, brethren. People. Okay. John chapter 3, verses 18 on to verse 21. John chapter 3, verses 18 on to verse 21. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And there is only one name given among men under heaven by which we must be saved. That is Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. Okay? And this is the condemnation. That light is come into the world. You read for uh, John chapter 1 sometime. Talk about that, okay? And this is the condemnation. That light is come into the world. And men loved darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. And we, I mentioned that unto you, okay? I did mention that unto you. So, uh, John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Here, hold your place there. Here in John chapter 3. John chapter 1. Okay? Beginning from verse 6 on to verse 10. In John chapter 1. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for witness, to bear witness of the capital L, light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that capital L, light, but was sent to bear witness of that capital L, light. That was the true capital L, light, 
This is referring on to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Word made flesh, okay? Which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Okay? Now go back to John chapter 3, picking up verse 19 again. And this is the condemnation, and this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. All the coadjutors here on YouTube, they hate Christ. They hate the truth. They hate the light. They love Catholicism. They love Satan, their father. Okay? For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light. Why? Lest his deeds should be reproved. And these uh, guys who are able to successfully infiltrate the body of Christ, sooner or later they shoot themselves in the foot, they give themselves away because they're, they're good actors, worthy of Academy Awards. Yes, but they can't keep up their facade forever. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Now go back to Ephesians, which I shut the scriptures on <laughs> go back to Ephesians chapter 5 Ephesians chapter 5 Ephesians chapter 5 picking up at verse 14 well let's read verses 12 and 13 again for uh, verses 13 and 14 again beg your pardon but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light for whatsoever doth make manifest is light Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Church of the living God. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, the fool who says in his heart there is no God, but wise, having wisdom, fearing the Lord. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And what is the will of the Lord? That we who are of the church of the living God, his body, abstain from all appearance of evil. And to remember that we are all will have the ministry of reconciliation, having the word of reconciliation, being ambassadors of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Yes, we're talking about this again. Because I know for certain there are some of you at the Church of the Living God who are just sitting there. It's like, well, what's the point? You know, if we're going to be caught up, everything's going, nobody's listening. Excuses, excuses, excuses. We can, we can have little pity parties and we can um, glorify ourselves in our pity. But the truth is, someone who holds to excuses, you know, it's someone else's fault. That's what lost people do. See, lost people can't accept responsibility and accountability. They always have to blame other people. Because, they remember, they're being held at gunpoint to do things. Okay? But we're told to redeem the, the time because the days are evil. That doesn't mean just sit here, wait, and it's like, okay, going to be caught up, hopefully. Hopefully going to get caught up. Just going to wait till I, until it happens. No. No, no, no. But we also have to remember, brethren, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We are not to sit idle. We are to do what the Lord has called us to do. But see, you and I as of the church of the living God, okay, this we must remember. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 on to verse 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant. Ignorant. <laughs> Ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Others who have no hope. Evolutionists. Going to die and be worm food. Catholics. It's a, it's a sin of presumption to presume that you know that you are saved and going to heaven. Okay? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Sleeping Jesus, those who are dead. Okay? 
For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, and <laughs> many of us are going to be alive and remain before the catching way happens, okay? That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. The trump of God is the trump is the sound that the trumpet makes. There are some very sick, deluded people out there who say that this is <laughs> talking about the American Napoleon Bombard, Donald Trump. <laughs> If you want to believe that nonsense, you, you go ahead, run along. There's not much hope for you, I don't think. But anyway. And with the trump of God, the sound of the trumpet, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, come up hither, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. If you are saved of the church of the living God, born again, a new creature in Christ Jesus, you have absolutely nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear. Why is that? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 1 on to verse 11. Remember, if the Lord has saved you and he has given you his salvation, see, whether someone kills you, robs you, steals from you, nothing is going to separate you from the love of God which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay? You are sealed unto the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. Okay? We, as the church of the living God, we have to remember that in light, of course, of what is coming. Because you know what, brethren, people? It's going to get pretty scary. It's going to get pretty, <laughs> very scary. Even for us as the church of the living God. Because of how close we are. But see, we must never forget. We must never forget these truths about being sealed. Belonging on to our Lord Jesus Christ. We have nothing to fear. Now that doesn't mean that you be flippant. You know, care less about it. No. Or carefree about it. No. No. No, but we have nothing to fear. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 under verse 11. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We will have a new body. Okay? This decaying, sinful, wretched skin suit, which Catholics like Beelzebub of Blackpool worship, um, this, this isn't it. This is going to be dissolved. This is corruptible. We will have a new body. We will have a new house. Okay? We'll have a mansion, but we'll have a new house being clothed upon from heaven. Okay? This is not the body that is going to be inherit uh, heaven and the kingdom of heaven, okay? We're going to have a new body, all right? For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. Our house which is from heaven, our new body. If so, if so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Hold your place here and go to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, verses 10 on to verse 15. Okay? See, we need to remember these things, brethren. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. If you've come to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, called upon his name, and he save you, then you belong to him. Okay? And when you belong to him, he that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. The witness, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, that seal until the day of redemption, the circumcision made without hands. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, like all the devil coadjutors and the Catholics. Because he believeth not the record, the 
record, the authorized version of the scriptures, that God gave of his Son. And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know, without question, no doubt, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. See, we who are saved of the Church of the Living God, we know that we are saved. Because we have the witness within us. We have the Lord, our Father, Jesus Christ, our God, the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that Spirit living within us, okay? For you to accuse someone of the Church of the Living God of having fear of that or instilling fear, I turn that back on you. You are the ones that do not have God within you because you're lost to whom it concerns. Okay? Let's continue. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, we've already covered this in previous videos, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. And if you're asking for personal selfish things to glorify your flesh and to consume upon your lusts, then of course, because it's not about you. You are to pray for others. And if the Lord gives you something like we have covered before, you are to give unto other people. Okay? Go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, where did we leave off? Okay, we um, verse 4. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, having our new body, getting redeemed, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Because, see, we're all going to die. But, see, we get caught up, we get raised uh, raised up, redeemed. We will be clothed upon with our new body. We're going to be immortal. No sin. Oh, oh, no more heart problem. No more artificial hip. No more cancer. No more. You know, what a glorious thing to, what a glorious thing to look forward to. What a beautiful thing to behold. What a wonderful thing to know that is waiting for us. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now he that hath wrought, hath wrought us for the same self thing is God, not ourselves. Who also hath given unto us the earnest of the capital S. Spirit. Spirit meaning himself. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Yeah, this is not our home. But if you're at home, like I know people who are Christian millionaires. It's like, oh, I don't want to leave yet. There's so much I want to see. There's so much I want to do. Something wrong with you. There is something wrong with you. You don't want to get out of here and go be with Jesus? But then again, you got to remember, sometimes it is more needful for others that you, yes, you are here. For example, the Lord has called me to do this. The Lord has given me a wife who needs me. And whatever your situation is, God has you here for his reason. Okay? Remember that. Remember that. Okay? So, but if you're at home, if this, you want to be here, you want to stick around, there, there, there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. Because look at that verse. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. In Catholicism, they walk by sight, not by faith. Because remember, as we covered in the previous video, Catholicism is all about replacement theology. And the Jews require a sign. So, of course, Catholicism, who has enamored themselves onto Peter, and the reason being because he was the apostle onto the Jews, covered that in the previous video, okay? But, 
See, the false, they walk by sight. We who are of the church of the living God, we walk by faith. Okay? We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body, absent from this, and to be present with the Lord. And if you don't want to be absent from the body and you're a Christian, it's like, oh, I don't want to leave yet. I got a summer house that I want to go to. I got this and that. I, I, I really question whether or not you're a saved person. A person is a spirit's own body. I really do. I really do. I really do. And I do know of these Christians out there who are millionaires and they're the first ones to tell you. Um, See, that, that's the premise of devils like Joel Osteen, to have your best life now so that you don't want to leave it. Like a dear sister of ours who, uh, who is waiting for us, who said unto a, a beloved, beloved of ours, why are we hanging on to this life when we know that we are going to go home to be with the Lord? Why do we hang on to this life? And someone who is so close to home only in that kind of state would they understand that. Only those of us who are of the church of the living God understand that. Why do we want to hold on to this when we know that we are going to be with the Lord? As Paul has said uh, elsewhere in scripture, but to stay in the body is more needful for you. Okay? And because we know what awaits us and that we have no fear, because remember, all that the Jesuits can do is kill you. Unfortunately, yes, the Jesuits never forgive nor forsake. Do you, Beelzebub? Yeah. Uh, they never forgive nor forsake. And once they kill you, they're going to go after your family. Yes, but see, they can't kill the soul. They can't. They can't kill the soul. So the worst they can do to you is all that pertains to the flesh and nothing of the spirit. Remember that. And knowing these things, brethren, wherefore we labor that whether, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Now, once you are saved, born again, converted, you're going to heaven. But see, you could really earn his disfavor and anger as the church of the living God to where he is ashamed of you and kills you. And that he, when you get up to stand before him for the judgment seat of Christ, be like, oh, it's you just get in. I don't want to even look at you. Imagine being in heaven with the Lord and him being ashamed of you for all of eternity. And you think you're going to get in at the last minute, huh, tough guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Verse 10. For we must all those who are saved. This is in context for those who are saved. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Then, of course, you can go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Um, let's go there. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Wonderful book of Scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, not Proverbs. Cross-reference this with, if I get there. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. Different dispensation, instruction in righteousness. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Go back to 2 Corinthians. Verse 11. Brethren, you're in sin if you're just sitting there making excuses. See, we know what's coming. Yeah, we don't know what stone lies in the path of our personal road. 
But we know what is coming because we know him who has saved us because he lives in us. And we have a sure word of prophecy not given to any private interpretation. We have the scriptures. So, yeah, we know what's coming. We don't know about the little stones that are in our way as we walk with the Lord. But we know what is coming. Okay? And we have no fear. But, verse 11, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. So knowing the, therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. We, we who are saved, if the man, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is on earth right now, I don't know if he is. I personally believe he is, but I could be very wrong about that, can I? But I don't know. We don't know. But see, knowing the terror of the Lord, what terror is going to be coming upon this earth after we get taken out of the way? Okay? That's not instilling fear. We know the terror of the Lord. We persuade men. We warn you. Okay? We warn you. That's why we're doing this. That's why we do what we do. That's why we look into these things. You don't harp on them because we who are truly saved, born again, and converted to the church of the living God, we know. We know. The, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay? We know that we have eternal life. And we know that if we do things according to His will, ask things according to His will, He hears us. And if we have the petitions that we ask of Him, what, you know, how beautiful is that? We know these things. And knowing these things, that doesn't mean that you just sit there on your duff doing nothing. It's not that you go out and take things on upon yourself. God does not want you to sit there passively. Okay? No matter what your capacity is. How, how, much, how much could be getting done in these last days? Before the redemption of the purchase possession. If we had our focus on teaching scripture, preaching the word, and out there trying to get people to come to the Lord. You know, trying to convert people. We don't do the converting, but you know what I'm saying. Okay? But no, we get sidetracked by these devils over petty little issues. When we need all hands on deck, as it were... To be out there doing the works of the Lord, which he has called us on to do. And, you know, go to Acts chapter 20. Just one verse. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Covered this before. Take heed, uh, Acts 20, verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseer, seers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So see, we are to encourage one another, edify one another, uh, instruct, reprove, rebuke with all long suffering and doctrine, okay? But also, that is to encourage one another to do whatever it is he has called us on to do, okay? Whatever it is. You're just sitting there waiting. It's coming. Oh, why should I? It's just going to get shut. Oh, why should I? The doors are being shut. If you're having one of your little uh, me, 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 I, 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 self-pity parties, get over yourself and repent. But if you're clinging to that, like some people I know, um, to excuses, I don't think you're saved. And, you know, there are legitimate things that prevent you, yes. But remember, you read about how the Lord, how he told the parable about those who began to make excuse when the Lord called everybody to his supper and how angry he got with those people. The Lord knows what you have need of before you ask him. And he knows your limitations better than you do. He does not want you to be idle. And you might think it's small and mundane, but your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Okay? And we got to also remember, brethren, Church of the Living God. Okay? Ephesians chapter 1. 
verses 12 on to verse 14. That we, the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted, should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, the good, word, the good news of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed, eternally secure, once saved, always saved, with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption, catching away, being caught up, come up hither, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. See, those of us who are truly saved, born again, converted, we are purchased by the blood of the crucified one. We are his, we belong to him. So see, engaging with you in these subjects is not fear or paranoia. Why? Because if you're saved, you have nothing to fear. If you lost, you got a lot of stuff to be afraid of, boy. <laughs> oh, you um you think that you know you got to you got to live it, you got to earn it. <laughs> oh boy. Time of Jacob's trouble, you definitely going to have to you're definitely going to have to earn it. You're definitely going to have to live it then. Because during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. The law is going to return. Oh, yeah, boy. Hmm. You're lost. You you have... No, oh, wow. Wow. And if that man of sin, the son of perdition, is on the earth today, that means within the average life, a lifespan of a man, the catching away could happen at any moment. And the average lifespan of a man is what? 70, what, what was that in uh, um, um, Psalm 90? If it be 80, 70 or 80, 70 or 80 years is the average lifespan of a man. The most that uh, a man's going to get is 120 years. Okay, that's talked about in scripture. So if those, that man of sin, the son of perdition is on earth right now, there's a span between 70 or 80 years that the catching away is going to happen. Time is running out. And how many of us, how many of us get sidetracked with pettiness? Hmm? And Ephesians chapter 5, verse 30, we got to remember this too, brethren. Okay? Not to be afraid. Ephesians 5, verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Not James, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 19. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, dead to the world, we've covered this before, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he, will, he also will deny us. Again, that doesn't mean salvation, Okay. You're once saved, always saved. If you're of the church of the living God, you have nothing to fear. But if you deny him in your walk, he can deny you a blessing, a protection, health, life, happiness, love, whatever. Okay? There's so many things he cannot deny you. But because you are part of his bones and his flesh, he cannot deny himself. Why? Because you're once saved, always saved. But he can deny you a whole lot of other things, boy. If we believe not, verse 13, if we believe not yet, he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Why? Because of Ephesians 5.30, which we just looked at. Of these things, put them in remembrance. Hi, brethren. Hi. Charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. The words that these devils speak, trying to sidetrack you, to divert you from the truth. Charge them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. See, these devils want to uh, sidetrack you, to subvert you, to get you away from the truth, to put you in fear. We got to remember, we have nothing to fear. We fear the Lord, of 
Of course, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. But see, that terror is going to come upon them. And doesn't that bother you? Now, of course, there are those out there who have made their choice, no matter what's going to happen, they're going to hell because they have given their lives over to Satan to serve him. I know of many people, unfortunately, who have made that choice, okay? And you, you shall know them by their fruits. You can see by the what they do, okay? Those are people who have made their choice. If by some chance one of them has youth on their side and we get caught up and they go into the time of Jacob's trouble, hopefully because they have youth on their side, they will realize and get saved and get um, killed by that man of sin, the son of perdition, who uh, they are, they're serving Satan right now today. They'll get killed by him and be part of that great multitude that gets saved right in the beginning of the time of Jacob's trouble. Hopefully that be the case. But we got to remember, okay, not to get sidetracked. And also, too, study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. See, if you do not rightly divide the word of truth, you're Catholic! Oh, and I am using a Schofield set of scriptures, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you do not study to rightly divide, if you do not study to show yourself approved unto God um, and do not rightly divide the word of truth, you're no better than a Catholic. You've got to rightly divide. You've got to be dispensational. Okay? And this dispensation ends, as we all know, catching away but shun profane and vain babbling like every single attack that these devils lay against us for they will increase unto more and more they for <laughs> they will increase unto more ungodliness and their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hymenius and Philetus whom concerning the truth have heard, saying the resurrection is past already, and overthroweth the faith of some. See, that's what these devils want to do. They want to overthrow the faith of some. And they have. By having them, um, distracting them with their arguments and subverting them, using philosophy and all kinds of other nonsense. We have to remember this. We need to fear them, brethren. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Psalm 91, verses 13 on to verse 16. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation. Look at this. Verse 13. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Notice that it says dragon and the young lion. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And Satan as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And that dragon, that old serpent, the dragon, the devil, Satan, the accuser of the brethren... Very interesting. Romans chapter 16. Nah. Uh -huh. Romans chapter 16, not Acts. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, verses 17 on to verse 20. Talking about the young lion and the dragon you'll trample under feet. Now I beseech you, brethren. Romans 16, 17 on to 20. Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. 
For they that are such serve not their not our Lord Jesus, but their own belly, flesh, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. We've been over this countless times. Yes, you're hearing it again. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good, and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And of course you can tie that into Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 about the prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ. How he will bruise his head and you will, uh, bruise, he will bruise your heel and he will bruise your head. Okay? And we as the church of the living God, we as the church of the living God, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Not 1 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verses 3 on verse 12. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that is uh, 2 John, uh, 1 John chapter 2 verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not all of us, but they were made manifest that they were not all of us, because if they were of us, they would now continue with us and just bradize that. That's the falling away, okay? And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, the third temple, the rebuilt temple, showing himself that he is God. Remember, ye not, that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, and amen, it's already at work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he, the church of the living God, be taken out of the way. The he who now letteth will let is us, the church of the living God, which is his bones and his flesh, part of his body. He cannot deny himself, okay? We get taken out of the way, okay? The falling away is happening, okay? And then the catching away, the redemption of the purchased possession, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, okay? And then, after we're gone, shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, referring unto his second coming. Even him, whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Who is this even him, that man of sin, of some perdition? And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that he that they might be saved. And this, of course, this is in the Pauline Epistles doctrine for us today. There are men, people out there, men and women, who will not receive the love of the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. They've made their choice. Some out there have heard the true gospel, but they would rather choose Satan, love of this world. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You're saved because you just believe. God loves everybody and you're a good person worth Christ dying for. You gave up certain things and now Christ is obligated to save you. You can live your whole life as a scumbag devil, but on your deathbed, you're going to repent and get in by the skin of your teeth. Good luck there, hotshot. That there are many paths to, to God? Take your pick. Okay? And why? See, you don't want truth? God's going to give you what you want. If you don't want the truth... He'll send you strong delusion. He'll give it to you. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. 
that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And that man of sin, we've talked about that, you and I, at length before. I'm not going to get truly into it. There'll be links in the description box. I do want to mention just one part. Go to Daniel, of course. Just, just one, just one little, little tie-in here because we've covered this at length, okay? Just one little tie-in. Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8, verses 23 on to verse 25. Daniel chapter 8, verses 23 on to verse 25. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. The mighty and the holy people, this is Old Testament, it's talking about the Jews, the Hebrews, okay? And through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. And through peace shall he destroy many. Hmm. Hmm. A prince. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now the last time I tried this, I accidentally turned everything off. So, now we're going to watch this, uh, a little of this video. Okay? Oh. And look, and he's so handsome. Isn't he just so handsome? Okay, yeah. All right, now bear with me, brethren. Okay. Now, we're going to begin. We're going to listen to his speech. Listen to how he is speaking. Okay? Listen to how he presents this. Pay attention. You'll find this very interesting. Okay? All right. Here we go. Isn't he a lovely bloke? Ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 pandemic has shown us just how devastating a global cross-border threat can be. <laughs> and also showed us how stupid people are to believe the, uh, the lies of the Jesuit order. Climate change and biodiversity loss are no different. In fact, they pose an even greater existential threat to the extent that we have to put ourselves on what might be called a warlike footing. Having myself had the opportunity of consulting many of you over these past 18 months, I know you all carry a heavy burden on your shoulders and you do not need me to tell you that the eyes and hopes of the world are upon you. To act with all dispatch and decisively because time has quite literally run out. Kind of true on that part. <laughs> kind of true. The recent IPCC report gave us a clear diagnosis of the scale of the problem. We know what we must do. With a growing global population creating ever increasing demand on the planet's finite resources we have and see this is all part of the new world order agenda uh getting people on electricity using climate change yeah climate change you can believe in this is all part of it the 2030 agenda and stuff like that okay this is all part of the coming kingdom of that man of sin the son of perdition 
have to reduce emissions urgently and take action to tackle the carbon already in the atmosphere. Carbon already in the atmosphere. And they want to produce or promote veganism um, because cows, uh, because meat is affecting the atmosphere. Cow flatulence. The <laughs> cow farts. Yeah, yeah, cow farts. Because cows fart. I'm, wrecking. I'm not making that up. You look that up yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's why they're pushing the, the veganism thing. Yeah. Including from coal-fired power stations. Putting a value on carbon, thus making carbon capture solutions more economical, is therefore and we all absolutely breathe, critical. Exhale carbon. Similarly, after billions of years of evolution, nature is our best teacher. In this regard, restoring natural capital, accelerating nature-based solutions, and leveraging the circular bioeconomy will be vital to our efforts. As we tackle this crisis, our efforts cannot be a series of independent initiatives running in parallel. The scale and scope of the threat we face call for a global systems level solution based on radically transforming our current fossil fuel based economy to one that is genuinely renewable and sustainable. So, ladies and gentlemen, my plea today is for countries to come together to create the environment that enables every sector of industry to take the action required. We know this will take trillions, not billions of dollars. We also know that countries, many of whom are burdened by growing levels of debt, simply cannot afford to go green. Here we need a vast military-style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector. With Pay attention to this. Trillions at its disposal, far beyond global GDP, and with the greatest respect, beyond even the governments of the world's leaders, far beyond global GDP, and with the greatest respect, beyond even the governments of the world's leaders, far beyond, far beyond global, restoring natural capital, accelerating nature-based solutions, and leveraging the circular bioeconomy will be vital to our efforts. As we tackle this crisis, our efforts cannot be a series of independent initiatives running in parallel. The scale and scope of the threat we face call for a global systems level solution based on radically transforming our current fossil fuel based economy to one that is genuinely renewable and sustainable. So, ladies and gentlemen, my plea today is for countries to come together to create the environment that enables every sector of industry to take the action required. We know this will take trillions, not billions of dollars. We also know that countries, many of whom are burdened by growing levels of debt, simply cannot afford to go green. Here we need a vast military-style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector. With trillions at its disposal. Did you hear that? A military campaign with trillions at his disposal. Did you hear that? Did uh, Mr. Uh, Prince here, did he just make an oopsie? Far beyond global GDP and with the greatest respect beyond even the governments of the world's leaders, it offers the only real prospect of achieving fundamental economic transition. So, how do we do it? First, how do we get the private sector all pulling in the same direction? After nearly two years now of consultation, CEOs have told me that we need to bring together 
global industries to map out in very practical terms what it will take to make the transition. We know from the pandemic that the private sector can speed up timelines dramatically when everyone agrees on the urgency and the direction. So each sector needs a clear strategy to speed up the process of getting innovations to market. Second, who pays and how? We need to align private investment behind, those, behind these industry strategies to help finance the transition efforts, which means building the confidence of investors so that the financial risk is reduced. Crucially, investment is needed to help transition from coal to clean energy. If we can develop a pipeline of many more sustainable and bankable projects at a sufficient scale, it will attract greater investment. Third, which switches do we flick to enable these objectives? <laughs> More than 300 of the world's leading CEOs and institutional investors have told me that alongside the promises countries have made, their nationally determined contributions, they need clear market signals agreed globally so that they have the confidence to invest without the goalposts suddenly moving. This is the framework I've offered in the Terra Carta Roadmap created by my Sustainable Markets Initiative with nearly 100 specific actions for acceleration. Together we are working to drive trillions of dollars in support of transition across 10 of the most emitting and polluting industries. Of transmission. Transmitting to who? Hmm? He's almost done. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're almost done with this. They include energy, agriculture, transportation, health systems, and fashion. And fashion! Oh! Oh, like all wearing the same uniform? Zika! Yeah. Yeah. The reality of today's global supply chains means that industry transition will affect every country and every producer in the world. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind that the private sector is ready to play its part and to work with governments to find a way forward. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, many of your countries I know are already feeling the devastating impact of climate change through ever-increasing Droughts, exactly. mudslides, floods, hurricanes, cyclones and wildfires, as we've just seen on that terrifying film. Any leader who has had to confront such life-threatening challenges knows that the cost of inaction is far greater than the cost of prevention. So I can only urge you, as the world's decision makers, to find practical ways of overcoming differences so we can all get down to work together to rescue this precious planet and save the threatened future of our young people. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, go sit down, pal. Yeah. Yeah, go sit down. So, you notice in that, uh, a lot of that is just, you know, Phil, sophistry, nonsense. But you notice that, that he mentioned somebody, a military campaign who will have trillions at his disposal. Hmm. Hmm. Trillions at his disposal. Thank you, pardon, brethren. Get this back up. Trillions at his disposal, huh? Hmm. Yeah, and then you saw in the background, I don't know if you saw that, but they had the flag for the Satanic United Nations, the Jesuits. Yeah. Now, like I said, the link for that will be in the description box. But see, you got, you got the big shots, the big wigs, talking up the New World Order. 
which is not a new world order. It's just a return to the dark ages when Catholicism was in control. But see, that's going to be on the scale of the world when Catholicism is in control, headed by that man of sin, the son of perdition. Go to Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33. Now, you got this kind of stuff going on. Now, we, we looked at that just to, to remind you, brethren, the catching away could happen this very year. Could not, could. Is that man of sin, the son of perdition, alive today? Maybe. I personally believe so. Did Prince Charles make an oopsie there? I don't know. I think so. Are we making mountains out of molehills? No. See, I, I forget who said it. And um, I forget who said it. If it was um, Eric Sean Phelps or uh, what's that guy? Wilcox or Weiner or one of those guys who are really uh, experts on the Jesuits, out of the ten schemes of the Jesuits, five succeed and five fail. Out of ten schemes of the Jesuits, five succeed, five fail. And they've been talking about this for years and years. Yeah, yeah. Where is the promise of your this God of yours? Where is the promise of his coming? <laughs> Do we realize once the catching away happens, that things are going to start happening muy rápido. See, there has been, what, 2,000 years now since this dispensation has been in place? You have had every chance to get saved, to come to the Lord on his terms, broken and contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon his name and that he may save you. Okay? What are you waiting for? Ezekiel chapter 33. Now you got to remember, here what we're going to be looking at in Ezekiel 20, uh, 33 is during the dispensation of the law, which was faith and works. Body and soul were connected. That's why it's made, made mention of uh, the soul that sinneth that will die, because body and soul were connected. If you touched something under the law in the Old Testament, it was, you know, it would affect your soul. See, being saved of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, when he seals you, you have that circumcision made without hands. That's what Paul's talking about. You can eat anything. You can go ahead and eat your pork sandwich. Why? Because you have the circumcision made without hands within you. Do you not know that anything that you eat will go into your mouth, into the belly, and cast out into the draught? But it's what comes out of the man that defileth the man. Well, look at that. But this is for a different dispensation, what we're looking at. The instruction and in righteousness, though, is what we're looking at this for. Ezekiel 33, verses 1 under verse 7. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts, and set him for their watchman, uh, it's watchman, not watchwoman. And watchman does not appear in the New Testament. Thank you. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow not the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he shall. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. See, right there it says deliver his soul, because this is a different dispensation. These guys, uh, those weird, um, uh, the, the Anderson guys, it's like if you don't preach to these people, you got their blood on their, your hands. It's your fault that they're going to hell or something. That's heresy. No, that's no. This is for a different dispensation. We are looking at this for instruction and in righteousness, okay? We, as the church of the living God, we're to warn these people, okay? And don't worry. If they don't hear a warning that comes from you, our Lord will give. The Lord has given witness of himself. Most people know of who 
At least Catholicism says Jesus Christ is. They've heard the name Jesus Christ, okay? So this burden is not upon us in this dispensation, okay? Just remember that. We're looking at this for instruction in righteousness, okay? Verse 6. But the watchman, but if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman over the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. Now about verse 6, in this dispensation, their blood is not on our hands. Okay? You've got to remember, this is a different dispensation. This is for, hello genius, instruction in righteousness. Okay? Today, in this dispensation, you decide to keep your mouth shut. That doesn't affect your salvation. But if you keep your mouth shut when the Lord has orchestrated a, a moment for you to be used of him to preach unto someone or to be a witness unto someone, you're not going to lose your salvation. If you deny him, though, he will deny you blessing, protection, or whatever, okay? But not salvation, okay? He'll use somebody else, okay? That's the way that works. In this dispensation, it was different. It was faith and works, okay? Eternal security was not there in this dispensation. You have to remember that. Again, this is for our instruction in righteousness, okay? Verse 8. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Okay? Different dispensation. Instruction and righteousness. Okay? And we read a little bit uh, farther. But verse 9. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But look at this. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Faith and works. During the dispensation of the law. See, you have uh, thy, uh, what does that say? But thou hast delivered thy soul. Delivered thy soul, you delivered your own soul during the dispensation of the law, which was faith and works. See, that's why we read that, to show you different dispensation. This dispensation, you ain't delivering your soul for nothing. That's up to the Lord. It is by grace through faith, see. Okay, we looked at this for instruction and in righteousness. That we as a church of the living God, knowing that these kinds of things, we're supposed to be warning the wicked. We're supposed to be warning the lost and edifying one another, brethren. Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel chapter 2. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet and I will speak unto thee. Oops. Oops. I just... And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet. And I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. See, here in America, so many people have been indoctrinated hearing this stuff about Christianity. Have a day. And they equate today Christianity with Catholics or Joel Osteen. And they hear so much about Christianity. God loves you. And they hear so much. Right? For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. Here it is, brethren. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear does not absolve us from being out there doing the work of the Lord, whatever it is he's called you to do and whatever capacity it is in, okay? And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, Though briars and thorns be with thee, because the briars and thorns choke the word, cares and riches of uh, cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches, you know, 
choke the word, that it become unfruitful, okay? Things of the world. Though briars and thorns be with thee, worldly people, and thou dost dwell among scorpions. Oh, yeah, we sure do, don't we? Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Don't, don't look at me. Look at the scripture. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And of course, we've got to do it. We've got to do it. We've got to do it. Romans. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 on verse 2. Uh, let's re refresh ourselves right here, okay? But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. While well, we're in the vicinity here, let's go back to Ephesians. Go back to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 8 on to verse 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. By grace through faith. Not of works, works of the law, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, a new creature, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Ezekiel chapter 2, finish up this chapter. And when I looked, behold, an hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was written. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. And there was written therein lamentation and mourning and woe. And I can... I can testify unto you. When the Lord was bringing me unto himself through the Romans road, through the scriptures, as a lost man reading the scriptures, being brought unto him through the book of Romans, yeah, reading the book of Romans as a lost man being brought unto him by himself through the scriptures, breaking me through the scriptures, yeah, yeah, and there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, now let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verses 14 on to verse 23. Brethren, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a most rebellious house. If they won't hear you, what do you do? Matthew chapter 10, verses 14 on to verse 23. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet and go to the next one. They don't want to hear you. Remember, it's not that they don't want to hear you. They don't want to hear what God says. They're willing to hear it from a Bible that they can understand. They're willing to hear about, oh, how God loves you. Not, if you don't repent and get right with the Lord and turn from your self-righteousness, you're going to go to hell and you're going to burn forever. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear, God loves you. 
You're a good person. Just believe. You can save yourself by just believing. You you go ahead and you get rid of those things in your life. Then come to the Lord. He'll give you. He'll save you. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. <laughs> yeah. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, mere men, mere men who are in the flesh, worship the flesh. Okay? But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, Take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Spirit of your Father. And if no one, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And the Lord is that Spirit. What does this mean? Oh, Jesus is the Father. Just, just another thing to, to bash that satanic Catholic trinity. Okay? And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child. And the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Again, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? He is speaking on the Jews. In this dispensation, we do not have to endure to the end to be saved. Because we're eternally secure. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. This is still doctrinally in the Old Testament. Okay? So dispensational difference there. Got to note that. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. We don't have to endure to the end to be saved today. Why? Because when the Lord saves us, we are sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? Once saved, always saved. We don't have to endure to the end. But under the law in this dispensation, because remember, this is uh, in the collection of the books of the New Testament, but the New Testament, Testament did not begin until the death of the testator, and our Lord had yet to die. Okay? Remember that. And verse 23. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not go, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Okay? Now go to Matthew chapter 15. We will end it here. Matthew chapter 15, verses 7. On to verse 14. Before the death burial, and death, burial, and resurrection, still doctrinally in the Old Testament, ye hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. Defileth the man. And, his dis and then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Pharisee is a Catholic who holds their traditions above what God has said, the scriptures. But he answered and said, but he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both 
shall fall into the ditch. The Lord sets up a circumstance and they are obstinate, don't want to hear anything that the Lord has to say through you. Shake off the dust of your feet and go elsewhere. And let us always remember, brethren, let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. I also myself need to <laughs> adhere to that more strongly myself. Because like I told you, the devils, they want to distract us. Yes, dear brethren, Church of the Living God, yes. The times that we are living in right now, yes. Divers are being hardened. People don't want to hear. But that does not absolve us from doing the works of the Lord that we have been called on to. And with Mr. Prince Charles there, <laughs> I personally believe that he... He did an oopsie, you know, starting a military campaign, having trillions at his disposal. Mm. Again, is that man of sin, the son of perdition amongst us? I don't know. I, I told you, I do believe he is, but we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. So it's going to be it for this video. I've um, been wanting to, you know, ever since... Uh, a uh, brother, a dear friend of mine shared this with uh, me and not only me. Um, but since he shared this, uh, it's been something that I've been meaning to get to and today was the day. So hopefully, uh, brethren, Church of the Living God, hopefully this is edifying and uh, encourages. We can't be silent in these times. We can't take it upon ourselves. But we have to go as the Lord will tell us. It's like, you go here, you go there. This is where I want you. This is where I want you to do what I've called you to do. So, Hopefully this will be a source of encouragement for us, the Church of the Living God, to not be idle. We're not, we're not earning our salvation. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Like I told you in the previous video, let us be those like on the Titanic, which was sunk by the Jesuits. Let us be those that are shoveling coal into those boilers to keep light going for as long as the Lord says. Thank you, by the way, brethren. My beloved brethren, you know who you are. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the prayers that you offer unto us, Church of the Living God. Thank you so much for your prayers. We need them. Next week, we find out officially what we already know, official, uh, about what, my, what ails my wife. We will find that out officially next week, but we already know. We know what it is. And also, too, brethren, keep uh, our brother Jeff... Uh, from North Dakota in your prayers. Uh, please keep our brother from um, Northeast um, in your prayers, his family and his brother, that his brother might return home healthy soon. Pray for one another. Pray for our brethren in other nations. And to those of you of the Church of the Living God, those of you who are my brothers and who are my sisters, you and I might not get along. You and I might not like one another. But if you are truly my brother or my sister, I love you. And I'm here for you. We are here for you. And even if you are of the Church of the Living God and we have allowed flesh to get in the way, regardless of that, we love you. And we pray for you. So. That's going to be it for this video. And didn't mess up on this one. Hopefully not on what. Um, we love you. And Lord willing there will be another video tomorrow. And we'll talk more about uh, things to come in the next video. If there is going to be one that's up to the Lord. So, Anyway that's it. We love you. 
We'll see you in the next video, brethren.